Skip, how much pressure is on Ty Lue now? Right now, Ty Lue sits on the hottest coaching seat in all of sports. Mm -hmm. Thanks in some part to the man sitting across from me because he's not going to like Ty Lue come pretty soon here if LeBron's team continues to sink. They need to sink some shots, as you have correctly yeah. pointed out. But what just happened? Ty Lu was coaching a team that was dead in the water. And all of a sudden, it was it sprang back to life because of three deals made at the trade, trade deadline that saved the season and turned everything completely around. And Isaiah Thomas, who has been demonized and scapegoated by everyone, and correctly so, is now no longer there. So the finger's got to point somewhere, and it feels like it's starting to point at Ty Lu. So what just happened? We saw the new Cavs click sensationally at Boston and click sensationally at Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. Then they had to take a week off, and they came home, and they clunked and they clanked at home against a Washington team without John Wall, and then against the Spurs team without Kawhi Leonard and without Manu Ginobili. And just for the record, they were up 12 on the Wallless Wizards. Uh, that was with 519 left in the second quarter. And from that point forward, they lost the rest of that game 77 to 58. That's in the King's Palace. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday, they lost the fourth quarter in the King's Palace 34 to 20. 34 to 20? And I, again, I don't read my responses on Twitter, but I always like to look at what's trending. And after the game, Jeff Green was trending. And I thought, what's that about? Clicked on Jeff Green just to see what the reaction was. And the fingers were being pointed, and the, the calls for firing were aimed at Ty Lu for playing Jeff Green much of the fourth quarter and keeping Jeff Green, because they had no other choice, on LaMarcus Aldridge, who right. torched him and then for a while torched LeBron because neither is big enough to play LaMarcus Aldridge when he is on with that turnaround jump shot. Right. So, all of a sudden, everybody's after Ty Lu, and it dawned on me, Ty Lu's going to be in trouble unless when Kevin Love does come back. He's been a classic scapegoat, too, within that franchise in the confines of the Cavaliers. So he'll come back in, what, a couple more weeks, yes. I'm going to assume. So maybe some fingers will be pointed ultimately back at Kevin Love. I, I pity him when he comes back. But the, <laughs> the point is, in this case, Larry Drew's sitting on that bench. And I have a lot of respect for Larry Drew. Yeah. He's an old head. He's old school. He knows how to coach. He coached Milwaukee for a year. He coached Atlanta for three seasons. He's been all around the league as an assistant coach. This is his seventh stop, sixth stop as an assistant coach. And he's sitting right there. And I'm not going to be surprised if he gets elevated at some point because somebody's going to have to take the blame if this doesn't suddenly turn back around and click. It might. But th those were bad signs in those first two home games. And the onus is on a Ty Lu who yesterday had to show he's doing something. So he said, we're too predictable. And he put in some new sets with LeBron, the offense running through LeBron at the elbow, which is a nice thought, but I don't think it's going to change life in Cleveland. Anytime you have a superstar, you have a LeBron James, you have a Kevin Durant or one of these top flight guys, the expectation is get to and win, to win the finals. I'd say. I think the pressure is heightened, Skip, for the simple fact that, as you mentioned, all the trades that they made it at the deadline. So now they got a Rodney Hood, they got a George Hill, they bring in a Larry Nance Jr., and it invigorated them. And Jordan it just, Clarkson. Uh, Jordan Clarkson, well, who's instant offense off the bench. Yeah. I love him in, his, in that role. But what's happened, Skip, is that they were going along real good. They had this break. And now they come back. And right now, they're a team of streaks. When the shots are falling, Skip, it seems like their defense mm -hmm. gets elevated. They push up into the guys. Yep. Shots stop falling. Now, all of a sudden, they don't play defense. I'm like, hold on. Guys, at least if you're making threes, you give up twos, you're still ahead by one. It, it actually should be the still, other way around. Exactly. Yes. It's not now when the shots don't fall, they don't yep. play defense. They go from being up six. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the shots stop, shot stop falling. Yep. And then next thing you know, they're down 10. Yep. Because it's like lay up, lay up, kick wide open three. And you're like, well, what happened, guys? And it's just that quick. Skip, look, they just need guys to make shots. The, the two losses, Jetty Oseman, 3 of 13 from the floor, 0 of 3 from 3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 0 for, 0 for 4 from 3. Yep. George Hill, 3 for 17, 0 for from 3. J.R. Smith, 7 of 20, 3 of 14. I mean, 
there are 16 of 69 from the three-point line. Okay, you're not going to win. You're I, not. I got that. But back to Sunday's game, yeah. did I blame Ty Lue? I didn't have one thought in my head in the fourth no. quarter for playing the bench because he, he went with the second unit plus LeBron. The thing is that, yeah, you have guys that can, you know, Jeff Green can create his own shot. He can slash to the basket, but they got punished on the offensive glass. And that's the thing because they had power in there for a little while, and then they came back with LaMarcus Aldridge. So now they're getting second-chance points. So even if you do make them miss the shot, you're unable to secure the rebound because you don't have enough bigs in the game. Okay, but Ty Lue prioritized, we need to score. Right. They wound up with 20 fourth-quarter points. Right. That's pathetic for LeBron and company with all this new firepower. They, have, they did have some great looks, yep. but they just didn't make them. But here's the thing, Skip. It seems like, okay, you get this old roster out of there, and you come in with some new guys. Okay, you're playing good. Guess what? In another two weeks, you're going to have to try to get Ke Kevin Love reintegrated. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to start the process all over again. And that's what they're up against right now. It seems like they can't get a lineup that's going to stay on the floor for any length of time before someone gets hurt or somebody's coming at coming back that's going to play major minutes, and now you got to find a way to get them back involved. Most teams would consider this a good problem to have because you have too many good players and you can't find the right combo. Right. And the onus will fall on Ty Lue. If the shots don't fall, he's going to fall. They're going to, no, you, you'll blame LeBron. I mean, you're blaming Ty Lue right now, no, but you'll no. blame LeBron later. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Well, d d count me out of the equation. I'm talking about what's going to happen inside that franchise. Well, the thing, who, who's the easiest finger to oh, point the, the at? Oh, the head coach is always, because yeah, yeah. you, you can get another head coach. You can't get another LeBron. But, Skip, here's the thing, is that these guys, Kevin, when you had Kyrie, you already knew. LeBron Kyrie was one, two and then Kevin Love was going to probably be the third option. Mm -hmm. Well, now you don't have Ky – Kyrie's been long gone. You have no Kevin Love. Who's your consistent second option? So you need, you need some of these guys to step up and give you high teams on a nightly basis because you never know. We know when Kevin Love comes back, Kevin Love's going to be the second option. Mm -hmm. So he needs to be the second leading scorer. Right now, we don't have a second option – that we can consistently, I keep saying we, the Cavs can consistently count on. You can say we, you always do. No, I don't like saying that. Right now, the Cavs don't have a consistent second mm -hmm. option. So now they need high teams from JR or George Hill or Rodney Hood. They need, so Clark I'm assuming when you talked to Braun last night, he's already telling you, I don't have enough help. No, he ain't saying right? that. He said, we, we good. He said, I don't mm -hmm. care where we at in the playoffs. Because yeah. don't nobody want to see it. No. Well, that's true. In nobody the East, wants, nobody wants to nobody see wants, that. Nobody wants to see old Black Panther. Well, yeah, he, he got so that. So now vibe. he's the Black Panther. Yeah, hey, yeah. hey, wait a couple playoff time, he get on that vibranium. Really? <laughs> wait when he get on that vibranium. A lot of people have wondered if he's been Ooh. on that vibranium. Well, Kawhi a lot have wondered. Kawhi got on it. That's why uh, Kawhi was Oh, that's why he's going to be back uh, in a month? Yeah. Uh, I don't know Kawhi. about that. Yeah, that's uh, why he's going to be back. Yeah. Uh, but you know, Braun, hey, watch what we do to the next tonight. He's going to be out. He'll be out. she be out again. Miss Triple Dub? I got to watch it because paparazzi be trying to snap pictures of Bron and Miss Triple Dub. I'll be mm -hmm. having to guard it. Mm -hmm. Well, he sh tonight he should have a Triple Dub. No, you know what's going And they should win this game by 20 points. Joy, they you know, but you know what's going to happen? If he gets a Triple Dub and he plays 28 minutes, Skip's going to say he, he should have got a Triple Dub. But why would he play 28 minutes? He should only play 18. 28? Yeah. He he'll, he'll play 38 minutes. You know it and I know it. How many did he play Sunday? 40. 40. He needed 40. to. Yeah. He indestructible, though. Huh. 33, 12. What, what do you have, 33, 13, yeah. and 9? But when you're on that vibranium, you got... <laughs> <laughs> hey. uh. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.